And now, streaming live from Chicago, Illinois, it's the comedy show with a podcasting habit, Starlight Radio Dreams! Tonight's show is Season 5, Episode 11, Spooptoberfest 5, The Reckoning. Featuring The Curse of Tammy Taters, The Painted Lady, Sherlock in Time, A Scandal in Nottingham, Void, and The Legacy of Tammy Taters. Now, here is your host, a man who puts the Prince Hal in Halloween, Merlington Shota! <laughs> Hello and welcome to the show! We have so much for tonight that I have been once again asked to keep my MC time brief. And honestly, I'm starting to take that personally. On the topic, and for those of you watching live, yes, I am currently surrounded by fire, and honestly, it's fine. This is fine. You see, in honor of Spooktoberfest, I have been sent to hell to reckon for all of my supposed sins, and I'm told that the hells that I will be visiting tonight were all chosen by and for some of the staff here at SRD headquarters. This one seems to be the hell for people who aren't terribly imaginative. How about you, friends at home? What do you imagine your personal hell would be? Or, less personally, what hell would you suggest me? Uh, for me? Uh, what's that? Oh, uh, sorry, I'm being told by the control room that they have another hell for me. Uh, all right, uh, go ahead, let's, let's see it. Ah! Oh, children! Shit! I mean, darn! Ah! Uh, uh, stay away! Everything here is antique, sharp, or alcoholic. I am I'm not prepared to read the very hungry uh, very hungry caterpillar again. All of my sugar is uh, sugar free or butterscotch. Just uh. uh what up, Spoopy Files? I'm Morty. I'm Todd. And you're listening to. Phantom, Phantom Smashers. Smashers! Welcome back, Phantom fans! Phantoms! Yup! Like fans of the show. Uh huh. So, check it out, sauerkrauts. Today is a very special episode of Phantom Smashers. We're banging it back to our hometown of Jacksonville, Florida, to bring you the newest, freshest, most cyber awesome haunting of the year Tammy Taters! Now, homies, you all know that when I see a sick, fresh, dilapidated mansion like the one we're standing in front of right now, I just gots to leap before I look. But first things first, I'm going to turn it over to my tight partner, Morty, who's going to drop some hardcore Tammy Taters lore on us. So first, get ready for that lore bomb, I Yup. So first of all, a lot of you might not even know who Tammy Taters is. If you're not up on all the latest social media, Instagram! Tammy Taters is the premier specter of the Eastern Seaboard haunting scene. East Side? Don't just. Okay. So, for those of you not in the know, Tammy Taters was once a prominent radio personality who hosted her own cooking show, Talking About Taters. Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew! Dude, just. But then. She got murdered by a rival potato enthusiast in a Shakespearean bid to dominate the local tuber market. Tuber be or not to be, right? So Right? Right! Fine! Whoa! Morty, is everything all right, bruh? Yes! Is it, though? Yes! Okay, but is it, though, though? Yes, everything is all right! Is it all right? Or is it all right, bruh? God damn it, Todd! Will you shut... Up for five seconds. All you do is drag the show down. And the only reason I even invited you to be a part of this is so I could use your mom's microphone. Shut up. Wow. Are you Tammy Taters? And is my heart her ill-fated murderer? Because much like the violent end of that rival potato enthusiast, you have just enforced the most righteous vengeance upon my feelings! Dude, come on! No, Morty! I'm not your dude anymore, dude! You think that just because I'm super cool and have frosted tips that I don't too feel pain? Let's just... Start over! No way, brah! It's over, brah! You can just keep my mom's microphone, brah! I don't care! You can't cut me any deeper than you already have, brah! Stop 
calling me bra. It's not cool anymore. Oh, God. Todd, don't run into the creepy old mansion all by yourself. Bro, you know I got to leap before I look. Well, fam, looks like I just got a free microphone. And here on Phantom Smashers, we never look a gift horse in the mouth. So I'll just... Join you next time when... I just... I'll just go... Ah, damn it! Alright, gang. So we're... Looking around this uh, spooky ass mansion, got a lot of grandfather clocks, a lot of doilies, you know, usual spoopy shit. What was that? My eyes see all! It's Tammy Taters! What mortal dares disturb my tuberific slumber? Holy shit, she's real! Yeah, brah, she real as fuck, brah! <sighs> We're gonna be famous, just like the ghost bros! Arise, my sprouts of damnation! Arrest and embrace these trespassers that you might squeeze the light from their veins! Darken the light of their eyes into eternal nightshade! Nightshade? I don't get it. It's a potato pun, you dipshits! No, my sweet minions pull their eyes from their skulls that they may prove spectators to their own demise! I got that one! Shut the fuck up, Todd! Oh, great Tammy Taters! We beseech thee to release us from your righteous wrath. You insignificant worm, you fry of treachery, would dare make demands of me? Fly out, potato peelers, and slice into their necks, decapitating them before my eyes! Uh, it's like paper cuts, but all potatoey. Decapitating. Gnarly pun, brah. Don't try to butter me up. You're on a roll, brah. Please stop cutting us. It stings, please. Why should I spare thee, mortal? Because if you let us live, that would be totally tubular. Damn, I feel so seen right now. To think I almost turned you both inside out and poured molten butter into your gaping spinal cavities. Well, I'm glad that didn't happen. Wow. Going through something like that together really puts our friendship in perspective, huh? Does it, though? That's real harsh, bud. Is it harsh, bud? Or is it harsh, spud? You are a comic genius. All is forgiven. Yeah. Yes! You have proved your value to me! So you may stay. Stay? You shall remain in my haunted mansion with me as my guests. Forever! Uh... Or I'll kill you! Oh my god. Yeah. This is incredible! Yeah. Looks like we're a Tammy Taters podcast now. Yeah. Tune in next time, Spoopy Files, when we'll be talking about Tammy Taters. Yeah. We'll see you next time on Phantom, Phantom Smashers. Tuber, you learn. Ah, thank you, Tammy Taters. The children are gone. I'm told that that particular hell was suggested by, by my niece, Devin, for me in particular. So our Thanksgiving fam family call just got more interesting. I have also been asked to uh, keep my uh, fear in check as we go through this exercise and not scream into the microphone anymore, so um, best of luck on that, I guess. <clears throat> this hell, meanwhile, was sent in by Fox Opulence. He's something of a, of a financial wunderkind and mogul when he's not being our announcer. What would he have against people setting up for a birthday party, though? Maybe just that they're not working? Mm, truly a nightmare. But 
this does segue somewhat into some more benevolent, if equally complicit, rich people in this charming parlor comedy coming up from Cassandra Rose. This one's called The Painted Lady. I say, Eloise, last night's festivities were exceptionally gay, weren't they? And did you see Lord Astor's ensemble of choice? How could I have missed it, Thornton? His peacock's plumage took up the entire room. And you, did you see what Lord Shelby and Lord Clume came as? Good heavens! What were they thinking? Dressing up as a pantomime horse? I always knew Lord Shelby was a horse's ass. This is why I so love my annual masquerade. After a summer of people pretending to be the most clever person in the room, everyone ends up revealing how dull and unimaginative they really are. I thought you only put them on to prove you had the best costumes in all London. So you noticed. I always noticed, Thorny sweetheart. That's why I never say anything. Though I must say, it's not like you to repeat yourself. Repeat myself? Don't you remember? You came as Cyrano de Bergerac 15 years ago. The season we met? That was 15 years ago? Honestly, Thorny, I keep telling you to get a secretary. Your records keeping is atrocious. Impossible. Fifteen years hence would put us in our forty. Well, if the exaggerated proboscis fits... Pass the cigars, darling. Must you smoke my cigars? Must I? No. Will I? Always. As your friend, I must point out how unladylike it is to smoke something so massive. If you want me smoking something more appropriate, then it is your duty to purchase daintier cigars. The thought occurs to me that you could purchase your own. Why should I, when I can live vicariously through you? Ah, but you must tell me more about that darling mask of yours, my dear. Uh, it was far and above the toast of the soiree. It is a butterfly, is it not? Indeed. She is the famed Painted Lady. She is a stunningly beautiful creature of such bright colours that I immediately fell in love with her. Plus, uh, my cook tells me it's another name for a prostitute. Do you never tire of going out of your way to be shocking? That depends. Do you ever tire of being a confirmed bachelor? It might be too late for me, but not for you. Uh, who knows, uh, with a little effort, you could have met your second husband last night. It has come to my attention that marriages are like children. Not everyone should have them, and yet the worst of us end up with the most. I would rather burn every lost tobacco field to the ground and have matrimony thrown upon me once more. Do be serious, Eloise. It's been five years. I've never been more serious in my life. I'm doing all of England a favor by pulling myself out of the running before I doom us all. Still, to give up on the whole endeavor entirely... Oh, Balderdash. I'd forgot all about him. Who's that at your door now? This season I made it my mission to become a more philanthropic individual. Uh, but since I absolutely abhor the people that run charities, I decided to give back to the less fortunate more directly. I have an apprentice of sorts. An apprentice, you say? What am I to make of this? Oh, you'll see soon enough. He's a charming boy, an officer from the Second Boer War, I do believe. I'm sure he's here to tell me of the latest girl he's fallen in love with. Good morning, Reggie. Do come in. Morning, my dear Thornton. It's almost tea time. Is it? Oh, well, I always did say that mornings are for saints and fools. My apologies, dear lady. I do not believe we've met. Ah, where are my manners? They're probably in yesterday's waistcoat where you left them. Lady Eloise Buxley, may I introduce you to my dear friend, Sir Reginald Drake the Third? There are three of you, Reginald. For the time being. And am I to assume that there is a Lord Buxley waiting for you somewhere? I'm afraid he will be kept waiting for quite some time. Her husband moved to Ford Park Cemetery five years ago, and as such, he rarely makes it out to London. I give you my condolences, my lady. You may keep them, Reginald. It happened so long ago that all you see before you now is an old widow, and a tired one as well. <laughs> well, if this is the look of your tired, I'd better guard myself for when you've had your rest. Reginald, what is it you so urgently needed to discuss with me? Yes, well... What I had planned to speak on was of a sort of delicate nature. Oh, do not be troubled by Lady Buxley, sir. Uh, she is my oldest friend, 
Whatever you have to say to me, you can be sure that she will keep in the utmost of confidences. Your eldest friend, you say? Do put your bobs away, Eloise. Let the boy talk. Just that I am in love. Love? Yes, I've fallen in love and it's all your fault, Thornton. I met her at last night's masquerade. Oh, that's just wonderful, my boy. Uh, who is she? What is her name? That's just the thing. I failed to catch hold of that detail before she slipped from my grasp like Snow White at the stroke of midnight. Cinderella. No, I don't think that was it. I think her name started with an L. I mean that Cinderella left at midnight. I don't care about her. I only care about my nameless maiden. Uh, perhaps we can use your power of observation to deduce who stole your heart. Uh, what is she like? Well, she's gorgeous, of course. Of course. And beautiful, and absolutely captivating. Was she pretty, too? Oh, absolutely. I couldn't take my eyes off her, not once, all night. And you gathered all of that, despite her face being entirely obscured all night? I don't understand. She's asking her costume, my boy. Uh, what did her costume look like? Well, she had the most clever mask on. It looked to me almost like a real butterfly. A butterfly, you say? Of course, it was much larger than a regular butterfly, but with all those colourful spots twinkled in the candlelight, you almost forgot where you were. It was one of the orange ones. Oh, what are they called? A painted lady. Did you see her as well, Lady Vaxley? I must say I did, Reginald. Then you should tell me who she is and straight away. She is the woman I want to marry. I just know it. It's not just love now, but marriage too. The heart knows what it wants, my dear lady. My stomach knows what it wants as well, but I still let calmer heads prevail to prevent indigestion. How exactly can you tell that she's the one anyway? You haven't even seen her face. I've still seen her. How she truly is, her soul, her kindness, her charm. Those are things no man or woman can hide away. They radiate out at every opportunity. They do? Quite right. I know the woman you speak of, dearest Reggie. As do I. Oh, wonderful! That's truly glorious. Thornton, thank you. Don't be so quick to thank me yet. It's soon to be followed up by some terrible news. I'm afraid the woman you have fallen for is already engaged. Well, then. Yes. Will. I see! Then I shall find this false suitor and challenge him to a duel! You, you shall? shall? Upon my honour as an officer and a gentleman, I shall cut him to ribbons. No, oh, that won't be necessary. I shall skewer his heart for breaking mine. That's a little extreme. I shall chop him asunder into itty bitty bits. What's his name? Whose name? This brigand suitor. Pray, give me a name so that I might seek my disgusting vengeance. Cyrano de Bergerac. Cyrano de... Why does that name sound familiar? I heard the pantomime horse gossiping about it last night. Apparently, he and your painted lady have been secretly engaged for a fortnight. Then I shall go and seek out Mr. de Bergerac post -haste. Would that you could, my darling Reggie. But sadly, the two have fled the night. To where? To... Uh... France? <laughs> this blasted friend! I'm terribly sorry, Reginald. Love sickness infects all of us eventually, even me. In my case, the girl was already married when we met. You never told me that. Well, that's because you never asked, my dear Eloise. A uh, Reginald, your butterfly will forever flutter just out of reach. I'm sorry to have taken up your time, Thornton. Not at all, my boy. It was no bother to me at all. Will I see you at the cigar shop this Thursday? I see no reason why you shouldn't. A uh, Goodbye, Reggie. Good afternoon, Thornton, Lady Buxley. It was an honor to make your acquaintance. Likewise. And if this Cyrano de Bergerac knows what's best, he'll keep his nose out of other people's business. That poor misguided boy. And believe it or not, we were both once that naive. I was. You certainly weren't. Hence the lack of gold shimmering on your left hand. He'll recover in no time. Why, by this time next year, he'll be arm in arm with some waifish creature that's still not quite sure what hit her. Still, there was a, a way about him. A way I saw in Lord Buxley when he first promised me everything. Yes. Well, 
You dodged the bullet this time around, didn't you? It was rather clever for you to lie about the engagement. Even if it almost ended in bloodshed. I'm starting to think that part wasn't a lie. Thorny dear, why are you looking at me like that? I'm looking at you how I always do. Really, now, Thornton, you shouldn't say things like that to a girl. She's likely to think. Yes? What is she likely to think? What time is it? I promised myself I'd only stay for an hour or two. My dear Eloise. Oh, we are heading back to Devon in the morning. Mornings are for saints and fools. Which does that make us? Well, that depends on you and whether you'll marry me. Please, Thorny, no more jokes. Love might not be for you anymore, but it surely is for us. Don't you dare get down on your knee, Thornton. It's too late, darling. I've fallen for you, and down here I will stay. But I'm a mess. It's nothing a good home won't fix. You hate my cigars. Then we'll leave the windows open year round. I mean it, Thornton. I'm an absolute disaster wrapped in silk chiffon. And I wouldn't have it any other way. Must you love me so? Must I? No. Will I? Always. That I promise you, my painted lady. I think I echo all of you when I say, Aww! That was so lovely. I appreciate how much romance is getting into the show lately. As for this fresh hell, well, I guess I'm not really sure what to make of it. Is it... Is it still loading? Is it done? Should I wait? Well, this one was suggested by Missy O'Danaher, our customer service special agent. I'm guessing this, um, whatever this is, is something that will really tick all of you off and make people complain. Hell, uh, email us, uh, send us an Instagram, whatever it is that you do. Uh, you prove, prove us right that this is going to make you interact with us in some way. Post about it on the Instagram. Yeah, she'll be really conflicted about that. Gosh, this is quite a mystery. It's a good job we've got Sherlock Holmes on the way in our newest serial, Sherlock in Time! My name is Dr. John Watson. I share a flat at 22B Baker Street with one Sherlock Holmes, a private investigator. And 22B Baker Street has become unstuck in time. Our transdimensional flood has taken us all over the past and future. Sherlock and I have ridden with Genghis Khan, witnessed the crucifixion, and micturated on the moon. Each time we right wrongs, fix mistakes, and are whisked off to our next disembarkment in time. Each time hoping the next disembarkment will be the disembarkment home. This is Sherlock in Time. Episode 27, A Scandal in Nottingham, Part 1. I say, Holmes, wherever do you think old 22B has deposited us this time? The question isn't where, Doctor, but when. Never get tired of that, do you? Oh, Cleopatra found it terribly amusing. You and I have very different memories of Cleopatra, especially when it comes to her sense of humour. Those crocodiles were just being friendly. The scars on my buttocks tell a starkly contrasting story. Titty reptiles notwithstanding... You shall no doubt be pleased to learn that I am 87% certain that we have returned to jolly old England. In Sherwood Forest, to be precise. Sherwood? Sherwood. At home to RV campsites and annual paintball tournaments. And Robin Hood. The legend of Robin Hood, yes. How do you know this is England? The proliferation of Hazelwood is highly instructive, as is the badger whose droppings you trod in three steps back. Oh, what say we find a campsite then? request some toilet tissue for my shoe. Terribly sorry to disappoint, but we appear to have arrived about 600 years too early for that. This is just before the late medieval era, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, and 
How could you possibly know that, Holmes? The size of the trees? That, and the Iron Mail Bernies and Bucket Helms of the local law enforcement. Local who? Down there, leading that rather disheveled woman to the gibbet. My word! Yes, it is nice to be dropped off so close to civilization for a change. They're going to kill her. That is the typical use for a gibbet, Watson, yes. What say we leave the deducing to me, and if we're in need of someone to tread blithely into a pile of badger scat, then we'll call you up from the reserves. Touché, Holmes, but I worry you might be overlooking a crucial element of the situation. Not at all. Even from this distance, I see the woman to be a peasant stock, approximately 55 years of age, developing cataracts and knock need based on her gait, but nevertheless possessed of clear and confident faculties, judging by her spirited resistance to the local constabulary's manhandling, and I use the contextually gendered verb advisedly. Yes? Have I missed something, Watson? Only that perhaps we might consider intervening? Intervening? To perhaps prevent her from dying on the gibbet? Ah, I see, yes. Your empathy is truly boundless. I have other skills. Fair enough, but 22B brought us here for a reason, Holmes. Perhaps that reason is to prevent murder via involuntary ritualized immolation? I mean, do we actually know that 22B is dropping us anywhere on purpose? Has that been canonically established? I'm going into the village to hopefully prevent murder. You are welcome to join me, Holmes, if you're not too terribly busy. Where's a hookah parlor when you need one? 4,000 miles removed, I suppose. Or 700 years, however you choose to look at it. (laughs) Who am I talking to right now? Oh, yes, the cleverest person in the room, as per usual. (laughs) Room being figurative. (laughs) Excellent point. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) I must say, this conversation is going much more smoothly than is typical. I noticed that too. (laughs) Yes, how frightfully boring. Very well, then. Coming, Watson! the father do you repent your crime of witchcraft i can't repent why i ain't done dickhead now can i well do you at least repent of your potty mouth ain't no laws against calling a duck a duck and ain't no laws against calling a sheep fucking sharp face a dickhead that is quite a pair of accents good of you to join us holmes yes i thought so too <laughs> The Lord shows mercy to a humble heart. Oh, oh, yes, oh, yes, oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. humble Oi. the Lord. I don't see no Lord here. All I see is a stuck-up prat in bed sheets and a bunch of chuckleheads nodding along with him. Oh, oh yes, yeah. good boy. Yeah, yeah, she's got our number. Very true. Nice. Yeah, very true. Have you nothing more to say in your defence? Yeah, fuck you, prat. Is that all you have to say? Well, I've also got. Fuck you, dickhead, but even I think that's a bit redundant by now. Very well. Before we burn you at the stake, do you have any last words? Yeah, but you're not gonna like them. Good villagers of Nottingham, Genesis 22.18 says thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. Oi! Is that a German accent? That accent is no more German than a hamburger which is to say only to a statistical insignificant degree. Good people of Nottingham, has this woman earned death? Aye! Aye. Has she, though? (gasps) You dare contradict a man of the cloth? We contradict burning a woman alive, at least. We are very (laughs) anti-that. Well, moderately anti, at least. I was bored. We're here to help. I don't need your help, creep. Don't need our help. Nonsense. Take heed, everyone. There are three key elements that all witches share. A strange mark somewhere on her body, an aversion to water, and an immunity to shop pains. Public exposure laws being what they are, I recommend this woman be stabbed with sharp needles and tossed into the nearest pond to see if she floats. You call that helping? Of course. Go help yourself, then!
Better than dying. I ain't gonna die. Now listen up, you dipshit. If I am not released at this very moment, I shall summon the devil to blot out the sun and cast all the world in eternal darkness. I'll do it too. <gasps> ha! Ha ha ha! Laugh, laugh with me. <laughs> Very funny, deranged old woman. But I'm afraid we will not be moved by such idle. Wait a minute, why is it getting so dark all of a sudden? <laughs> it is merely the power of suggestion, good villagers. If you adjust your eyes, you'll see that nothing has. Wait a minute, it really is getting dark. What is going on? It's a solar eclipse, Holmes. How did she know it was coming, I wonder? A cell of what now? Holmes, your pockets of ignorance are rare but astounding. How many times do I have to remind you that the Earth revolves around the sun? And how many times do I have to remind you that the severed head of a sea slug can grow an entirely new valley when left undisturbed? I think my thing comes up a little more often in life. Maybe in your life. How often do sea slugs come up in your life? This so-called witch must have had prior knowledge to that solar eclipse. Don't change the subject. How else could she have threatened to block out the sun? Oh, the black sun! It's blinding! Don't look directly at it! I cannot see! Don't look directly at the sun, you piss at it, git! Oh, the sun! Oh, the sun. Oh, no. ah. Hey, don't go! I need the mob mentality to justify paternalistic murder of a marginalized woman. Oh, black hole son, why did you come? Don't worry, it'll unblot itself in three days? More like a few seconds, Holmes. Oh, even better. It'll unblot itself in a few seconds. Oh, there it goes! The light, it's blinding! Stop staring at the sun! What the fuck is wrong with you? Oh my, are you also a witch? I've been called better. This is Sherlock Holmes, private investigator. Some have called me the most brilliant mind on earth, though I've never made the claim myself. Never denied it either. That wouldn't be terribly brilliant now, would it? I'm afraid the devil is entirely in abstention today, my lord. You mean father, not my lord? What you've just witnessed is a solar eclipse, an entirely natural phenomenon. And you seem knowledgeable in the science of witchcraft as well. I am knowledgeable in many things. Just not solar eclipses. Many, many things. Perhaps you might be interested in a quest. A quest? In service to the crown. The crown? I thought the crown and the clergy were rather at odds in the mid-13th century. We're actually in the late 12th century, but a good guess. Excuse me, I am talking. I am a priest. I am very important. No, you're not. Holmes, please don't antagonize the church again. My mother would never forgive me if I were excommunicated a fourth time. I mean, no, he's not a priest. Ooh! How very dare you! Are you suggesting some random peasant dressed up in bedsheets and a paper crown just so he could burn, uh... Where did she go? Who? The, the witch. The woman, I mean. The woman? She appears to have gnawed through her restraints and run off while we were bickering of a bishopry. I guess she really didn't need our help. No, but I do. Yes, but I'm not listening until you admit who you really are. Holmes, please, I don't fancy being hunted down by the Swiss army again. Better than that time we were hunted across Wyoming by Wild Bill Hickok. Granted, but I'd just as soon not be hunted by anyone. How do you know I am not a priest? Oh, please, my lord. You ask me that, dressed as you are in what is obviously Scottish cotton, when everyone knows that English 13th century clerical vestments were stocked exclusively from Mediterranean sources. You ask me that, after committing the obvious blunder of claiming Genesis 22.18, quote, thou shalt not suffer a witch to live, when it is actually Exodus 22.18, 19 in the Hebrew. You ask me that, when even a primary school education forewarns us that British medieval clergy were not permitted to sentence the peasantry to death, even under the suspicion of witchcraft, particularly whilst under the usurpation raid of Prince John. Honestly, my lord, how foolish do you think I am? Wow. Stumbled a bit under the solar eclipse, but glad to see you stick the landing, Holmes. 
And who exactly do you think I am? Wait, did you say the reign of Prince John? Under your patently false beard and childishly assembled costumery stands a man with an authority of pit and gallows. I deduce, therefore, that you are none other than William de Weddenhall, High Sheriff of Derbyshire and Nottinghamshire, more colloquially referred to as the Sheriff of Nottingham. <laughs> I'm not saying this is getting ridiculous, but only because it goes without saying. Then I shall reveal my true form. Behold, it is I, the Sheriff of Nottingham. Yes, that's what I said. And you say you controlled the sun by means of your intellect alone. I mean, I didn't say that, but... Then you are the very agent I seek. I am in search of a dangerous criminal. A dangerous criminal, did you say? Can't imagine who. One who poses a deadly threat to the state itself. A deadly threat? This is becoming less tedious by the second. I'm sorry, can we look back a moment? Why were you, the Sheriff of Nottingham, cosplaying as a German priest, trying to burn an old woman at the stake? That old woman poisoned a local blacksmith with deadly nightshade. Is it... Really illegal to murder a peasant, though? Illegal enough. But more importantly, she was also preaching sedition. She was attempting to recruit low lives and brigands into the service of the very criminal to whom I so recently alluded. Well, that explains the burning, but why the third grade Halloween costume? The Sheriff of Nottingham has enemies everywhere. The trees themselves have eyes. But none of these backwater, superstitious, pudding-brained adults would dare harm a man of the cloth. Can't imagine why you're so unpopular. I know, right? I mean, I'm rich, I'm powerful, I get to do whatever I want whenever I want. You'd think everyone would be dying to be my friend. Uh, full marks for imagination, anyway. But this is beside the point. I need your help locating this ferocious criminal. A fiend by the name of... Robin Hood. You don't say. This sounds like a very important enterprise, my lord. The state of Nottinghamshire itself depends upon it. No expense is too great. Capture this brigand for me, and you may name your price. Holmes, we are not seriously going to capture Robin Hood, are we? And why not? Well, for starters, I'm reasonably certain he doesn't actually exist. That could prove a bit of an obstacle. Secondly, he robs from the rich to feed the poor, rather on the plus side of the good-evil equation, wouldn't you say? If not for the state, then do it for the innocent young maiden he has kidnapped. Kidnapped? He's certainly bearing the lead a bit, isn't he? Yes, my own betrothed. Return her to me and bring me Robin Hood in chains, and all the wealth of Nottingham will be open to you. Money is nice. But it's mostly the challenge of tracking down a potentially fictitious master criminal that appeals to me. Very well. I accept your offer! Excellent. He was last seen- That won't be necessary. I don't want anyone saying you helped me win. Win what? Come along, Watson. I'll come along, but only to talk you out of this immoral enterprise at just the right moment with an emotionally engaging speech. I look forward to it. Hop along. And so we trudged into the deep, virgin woodlands of Sherwood, eager to discover- Ah, I swear to 22B if I step in one more pile of badger droppings, I'm abandoning time travel altogether! You're not fooling anyone, Watson. Where are we going, anyway? Not just anyway, Watson. West. Why west? Which? Which? Which west? Which way? Whatever the devil are you saying? The witch. As she trundled off in this direction and made little attempt to hide it, Inspect the ground more closely, you'll find broken sticks, depressed foliage, and various other spores available for deduction. You might even avoid stepping in badger dew for a change. I take your point. So the plan is to find the old woman and she'll take us to this Robin Hood? Or whoever's pretending to be him anyway. Still, this old woman had quite a lead on us. It might take hours. There she is! Why do I even bother? Greetings, old woman. Terribly sorry we were unable to assist you in your early escape. What seems to be the trouble? Broken ankle? Rheumatoid arthritis? 
chipped your tooth on a knot of rope? I'm all a distraction. A distraction? It's a medieval term for derangement. She's not actually calling herself a distraction. Oh, good. It only now occurs to me that trying to hunt down an infamous brigand and gang leader armed only with your razor-sharp wit and blunted sense of self-preservation may not have been your most cunning plan. I understand you've been recruiting men for this Robin Hood character. Where can we find him? Does he really exist? What woman did he kidnap? Do you know her name? Marion. Oh, of course, Maid Marion, obviously. And where can we find this Marion? In a birdhouse? Holmes, I fear that this poor old woman may have actually been referring to herself as a distraction. Why is that? If you might peel your eyes away from the forest floor for a moment, you shall no doubt deduce that we are surrounded by a dozen well-armed and unfriendly-looking men. I don't see how that... Ah. Lay down your weapons. I'm afraid my only weapon rests within my head, madam. Bad news for you. Knock your arrows, boys. I don't suppose you might consider telling me whether this Robin Hood fellow actually exists. I'd hate to die in a state of unsated curiosity. A dozen surgeons couldn't remove the curiosity from your head, Holmes. Nor a dozen arrows, tragically. Is Robin Hood real? Did he actually kidnap Maid Marian? Where is he? You're looking at him. Well, I must admit that is not the response I anticipated. Aim! Wait! Why should I? Because I don't want to die! Why must you always embarrass me, Watson? Loose! <laughs> yup, that's me. You're probably wondering how I got into this mess. Or, more accurately, how I got out of it. Tune in again to find out. Same Holmes time, same Holmes channel. What a cliffhanger! What will happen next? I've always felt a certain connection with Sherlock Holmes, though, as I'm an actor from California, I suspect that all we have in common, really, is age. Roughly. Take it from me, referring to the late 90s, uh, referring to the 90s as the late 1800s never got easier, and I don't expect it's going to be for you. And speaking of being an actor, this hell seems to be a theatre. Someone doesn't know me very well. Wait, I'm in the middle of a show right now. There's no one in the house. Oh no! <laughs> uh, oh, 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 wait, 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 wait. There's all of you at home. Even if I can't see you, you're filling... Those red velvet seats! You're spilling margaritas on the linoleum! You're eating popcorn slightly too loudly for the person next to you! I can just sense it, even from here. Mm. Thank you, audience, for being there, wherever there is, and keeping us going, for listening to our silly stories and making the world of creating a podcast just a little less scary. Speaking of scariness, though, and empty space, and no one hearing you, well, the fear of no one hearing you, here's a piece that's maybe a little too on the nose. The title card just says, Void. Welcome to Voidcast, the only podcast brought to you by the depths of Void. Today, we're spotlighting some of our members who have been using the platform to display their skills in the visual arts. Void is a home for all the work that you would otherwise need a website or gallery to display. Posting on Void saves you all the trouble of working to build a brand and directing traffic in a way that generates profit via sales or ad revenue. We've done all of that. All we need is your content, and we're happy to take as much as you can make. The first piece of the day is a charcoal sketch from Void Inhabitant Marlene Bunt. Marlene says... I was feeling... Redacted. So, here's a drawing of my cat. 
I spent three hours on it, and I think the gesture really captures Mr. Fuzzy Boots' form. This work is now part of The Void. Marlene could have kept this sketch in the pad and only shown it to people personally. But now it is here, somewhere between being publicly available and completely inaccessible. Anyone who wants to can now come and seek it out, specifically. We'll even remind Marlene of it every year on the date she posted it so that she can generate content with it again. Our next piece of art comes from Fabio Ficavo. It looks like he is a glass blower of some skill. He's posted a whole collection of glass spheres that he would like to sell. We'd like to sell those too, Fabio. Because Fabio could use our premium service to get those balls rolling out the door and into the hands of eager customers. It looks like even without that service though, Fabio is doing great. One of his most supportive friends saw it and said, good job. We hope that's worth more than any amount of money. Speaking of money, it is now time for an advertisement for Void. Void, the social media platform for people like you. Void provides you with a new venue for all of your creative and personal endeavors, including features no other social media platform can offer. Human beings desire connection. Trading my personal feelings for emoticons just wasn't doing it anymore. Then I found Void. Now I can share my darkest secrets with abandon and I get just as much meaningful response as I did with those other sites. Void is for creators, too. Research shows they are humans and desire to display new, unique, and worthy pieces of their craft. The Void offers limitless space to contain all of your best pieces. Even our largest sculpture can be engulfed by The Void. I make doilies out of uh, plastic drink straws. Please remain on topic. Oh, uh Void lets me take pictures and talk about my process and how much effort and time goes into making my art. I'm able to put a lot of time and effort into presenting my work in a public space. And sometimes I take pictures of my cat. Sometimes people see those. Your results may vary. Let your emotions be a part of the void. Share them like Marlene Bunt did in this last testimonial. When I first started on social media, I had trouble with knowing how much to share. Now that the chances of anyone seeing my posts are so small, I can post whenever I feel... Redacted, you may no longer feel that. We feel that now. Now Marlene feels supported. Wow. A lot of people responded to that. This is your allotment of serotonin for now. Will it work again? With that advertisement completed, so too is our episode for today. Today's episode is a product of Void. Void, go ahead and shout. Well, I don't know about all of you, but I certainly feel more, um, existentially concerned. I'm even more concerned to note that we only have one piece left for this evening. That must be why this hell is a clock. The unending march of time it truly is the greatest hell of our real lives, and worse, the unknown of whether we will achieve our wishes before all that time is gone. Ah, uh, oh, it got too real again just there, didn't it? That was a really dark one. Damn. I said I wasn't going to do this anymore, but um, it's the only way out. <laughs> I hope my failure there was very funny. There, all better. We did achieve what we wanted to after all. There were, and we were good writers and foreshadowed what's coming next very heavily. So you will be pleased to see the payoff in Legacy of Tammy Taters. <laughs> What up, Spoopy Files? I'm Todd. I'm Morty. And you're listening to Phantom, Phantom Smashers. Smashers. Your premier source for everything spoopy. Everything. Great news, fam. We've got a special guest for you tonight. What a shocker. Coming to us all the way from her ethereal home in the creepy old McQuivern mansion, it's... <sighs> it's... Just do it already. Tammy Taters! Welcome to the show, Tammy. Thank you, Todd. 
I'm just pleased as Potato Punch to be with you today. And tomorrow. And we're delighted to have you here, Tammy. And the day after tomorrow. So, tell us, Tammy. How long have you been haunting the creepy old McQuivern Mansion? On the day after that? Actually, Todd, if you don't mind, I'd love to take a moment to help your listeners become just as pleased as Potato Punch as I am by sharing my homemade recipe for Irish-style Potato Punch. Potato Punch? Sounds baller AF, right, Morty? And the day after that. I can't wait to hear more about it. But first, Seeing as Phantom Smashers is a show all about the supernatural world just beyond the veil of mortal sight, I was wondering if you could maybe spend a minute or two to share a few details about your unlife as one of the living dead. I'd much rather talk about Potato Punch, Todd. Here we go. Well... Here on Phantom Smashers, we have nothing but mad respect for the needs and interests of our guests, be they psychic mediums from southern Texas, alien abduction victims from central Tennessee, or even deadly spirits from beyond the grave. But... But, seeing as our last 65 episodes have all centered around a particular potato dish, I was wondering if maybe... Just this once, we could spend just a little time on the more supernatural aspects of your existence. I think you'll find my Irish-style potato punch much more fascinating, Todd. Okay, well, maybe, but still... I think you'll find my Irish-style potato punch much more fascinating, Todd. Okay, screw it. Let's talk about potato punch. Ugh... Please, let us out. We've had nothing to eat but potato broth for nine weeks. Then you'll want to change things up with my Irish-style potato punch. A wonderful choice for both lunch and breakfast. Breakfast? Do you really think potatoes have the power to unseat that perennial sunrise favorite, orange juice? (sighs) Of course I do, Todd. Of course she does, Todd. Morty? Did you have something you wanted to share with our listeners? No. Are you sure? Yes. Wonderful. The first thing you'll want to do at home is rinse and peel your potato. Just like an orange. Really goes to show you, potatoes and oranges aren't so different after all. What is that moaning sound? It's the sound of your heart melting at the smell of this delicious breakfast treat. No, I think it's another ghost. (laughs) Don't be silly, Morty. No, I am serious. Don't be silly, Morty. I think it happens whenever you mention oranges. (laughs) Then perhaps you shouldn't mention them anymore. We wouldn't want anything unsafe to happen to you after all uh why don't you tell us what to do after peeling oranges 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 whoa i am risen after a century of slumber the call of the orange awakens me excuse me we're in the middle of a show here i beg your pardon would you mind maybe scooching off to the side for a bit how Frightfully common. I am the Duchess Archipelago de l'Orange, and I am not in the habit of uh, scooching, as you call it. That was mad gnarly how you burst out of the floor like that, Duchess Archipelago. You are totes the ghost with the most. I prefer to think of myself as the Duchess with the muches. The Archipelago is here to terrify y'all. The Orange with the... Well, you probably don't want us taking up all your space, so if I could just get Todd's mom's microphone back... Silence, mortal. Yeah, that tracks. And you are? Hi, I'm Tammy Taters, and I just love to talk about taters. Charming. And we were actually right in the middle of a thrilling conversation (coughs) about potato punch. Yes, well... I'm sure that's utterly diverting to the average seven-year-old. I thought it was pretty cool. I'm sure. Uh, But I'm afraid the McQuivern Mansion is, uh, to use the crude vernacular, my turf. So if you'll kindly 
evaporate at your nearest convenience and we can avoid an embarrassing to-do. I think you'll find that I have the floor, Miss Delarange, as well as the walls and the windows. And our ability to leave. That may be. And the microphone. But this is my house. And at the risk of undermining my refined demeanor with the argument of a five-year-old, I was here first. Oh my dang, Morty, they're gonna fight! I don't care who was here first, Miss Delarange. I'm here now. I'm running a show all about taters. And unless you get out of my way and let me do my thing, I'm afraid I just might have to show the less charming side of my personality. Please don't. Please do! The McQuiven estate has been in my family for seven generations. Ghost fight! Ghost fight! Ghost fight! It's been my home since 1927, when my abusive and adulterous husband, Duke Peninsulus Lorange, died of a sudden case of axe to the back of his head 17 times it also was in the front if you know what I mean. And I am certainly not going to give up my home to some potato princess. Well, if that's how you feel, please allow me a moment to slip into something more terrifying. Of course. Maybe we just take your mom's microphone and leave. You fry of treachery! Who dares to interrupt my 66 straight showboat potato products? Prepare for tuberific torture! Glowing yellow eyes? Very impressive. Thank you! Your gown is gorgeous! Oh, you're too kind. Ahem. Oh shit, there's two ghosts! Aren't you terrified to see me? Okay, not as good, but still. Ghost fight! Arise, my multi-eyed army! Oh man, it's a bunch of cyclopses made out of potatoes. Like some kind of... Potato clopses! Attack! <laughs> your own battles? Afraid you might crease that elegantly understated tool skirt? Thanks for noticing! Of course! But you underestimate my power! Ah! Oh, cause potatoes conduct electricity! That's pretty good! Do they really though? Yeah, like all those science experiments in like third grade and stuff? Is that even real? Wait, who cares? Help me get the door open, brah! Your classically trained voice and precise diction can't save you now! Oh, my darling, it will take more than 500,000 volts to stop me! Wait, that sounds like a lot. Perhaps you'd enjoy a blast of citrus! Ah, my eyes! My all-seeing eyes burn! Ow, 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 ow! Terribly sorry to damage your flawlessly blended makeup. Thanks for noticing! But I didn't murder my husband with an axe just to be pushed around by the likes of you! Well, I didn't murder the man who tried to put my potato store out of business and then murdered me when he couldn't defeat me in the open market just to be... Uh, um... Yes, well, I'm glad to see you would never do something so evil as to try to push someone out of their home just because of a personal interest of yours. <sighs> You're right. If I try to supplant you in your own home, am I any better than the murderous fraud who killed me? Yes, but still, this is wrong! Oh, I hadn't expected you to come to that conclusion so quickly. I can't believe I almost perpetuated the cycle of violence that brought me here! Hey, don't knock here. These are real hardwood floors. They look wonderful. Thank you. Do you think that maybe there might be room in your beautiful home for oranges and potatoes to live in harmony? Just like I said. Don't ruin the moment. Drag. Very well. Let the unholy union of Tammy Taters and Duchess Archipelago de Larange commence. 
That was an incredible rain of blood oranges, by the way. Flattery will get you everywhere, Miss Tater. So, do you want to maybe do a podcast where we teach people how to make various orange and potato dishes? I thought you'd never ask. Wonderful! So, can we get rid of, you know? Of course. You're free to go. Drag, can I just... Get Todd's mom's microphone. Be gone! Thank you for joining us, everyone. Tune in tomorrow when we teach you how to make potato pancakes with a surprise twist that you'll never see coming. Does that twist involve oranges? Maybe. We'll see you next time on Orange Tato Tornado. Orange, you glad it's potatoes. Ah. Oh. The P and O show? Let's workshop that. Wonderful. So, how do we turn this thing off? I don't know. Oh, here it is. Ha. Huh. Well, that was um. Enlightening. Enlightening. There is an afterlife, and it's weirder than we thought. And with that, friends, the time has come for me to say goodbye. And thank goodness I'm once again among the stars where I belong. I am still sad to call tonight to an end, and I am already looking forward to next month, which promises to be even more over the top. You've all been amazing, and I sincerely hope to see you all here next month. Until then, from all of us to all of you, from coast to coast and all the ships at sea, good night. For Starlight Radio Dreams, Spooptoberfest 5, The Reckoning. Written, directed, and performed by Kat Evans, Jared McDerris, and Ansel Birch, with special guest writer Cassandra Rose, featuring the vocal talents of Ariel Leverett. The Starlight Radio Dreams theme was written and performed by Arnie Parrott. Special thanks to Shore Incorporated for their generous support. Join us next time, March 25th, for Season 6, Episode 2, March of the Pandas, another pandiversary. Be sure to dress your best for this black and white tie special, even though we won't be able to tell, as we dive deeper into the 2022-verse. Until then, keep laughing and keep dreaming. <laughs>